Good to see you, everybody. I'm your host, G Money Mustache, and I'm here today with a good friend, Raj. He's the inventor of the Synapse CCR, and he's going to show us what it's all about. We're going to move on to uh, a variation of a face pull, I believe, and uh, see where that goes with us. Most of the time we do stuff here, we, on, on, on here, we almost always do everything unilaterally. And the reason for that is this. So here's the deal, right? Um, Give, give me your hands like this, right? And, and, and pull in a little bit, right? Pull in, right? Long enough. Mm. If, you, if you're actually really resisting me, yeah, you're, you're, you're actually just gonna pull your body forward. I don't care how much you lean back, mm. right? You're, eccentrically, you're too strong with two arms. Mm. That's why it's unilateral. So if you really wanna get eccentric overload, right? We're gonna put you in this position, right? And we'll, we'll lengthen it all the way out, right? So we're gonna put you in this position and I would go into this kind of a move, right? Mm. So I'm gonna be here to here. So I'm going to be doing a lunge movement and keeping my chest straight towards it. Mm. Right? Yeah. Try that. See what, see what that feels like to you. See if that feels good to you, right? I would swap feet. There you, there you go. Good. And so what are the rules again? End, yes. of the, end of the concentric with the working side. So all the way back oh, opposite. Yeah. There you go. Good. Good. Oh, yeah, that right? Good. Right? And then exactly. And then to, to make up the ground that you can't get, pull this all the way behind you. Right? And then if you, you need more range of motion, slide your hips back. Great. 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 And pull. So you got to stabilize with this front foot. Yeah. So this actually gives you some of that sling activity in your body, right? You're using the right leg to stabilize the movement of that left arm pulling as hard as you can. Yeah. And this constant tension allows me to really choose which angle I'm pulling with my shoulder from. So I can feel as soon as I start firing, trying to send my elbow over to the left there, the more I go, the more I can feel it in the back of my, right behind my shoulder. And you're touching on a really cool aspect of this is that in the middle of the movement, you can change the path of the movement, yeah. right? So you can do one, one in a more linear fashion, you can get a little bit more circular movement from the shoulder. You can, you can vary that however you like. Here, yeah, we're gonna go more up. So he's doing a great job demoing that that external rotation of the shoulder would generally require you using a slightly lighter weight than a front face pull. But he's able to continue and just go right into that maximal effort without changing anything and just adapt the movement. Yeah, shift your hips back, get full extension. I'm getting stretched out of my shoulder. And from here, we just transition straight back into the pull. Nice work. How's that feel for the face pull? That's awesome. And you again, like it? Like, I've got a weird shoulder, so I feel like I get activated in weird ways. Yeah. And so you can kind of like, find it you can find you what you want you. Yeah. so the other thing that we pay attention to is what's crazy is you're doing a nice job what I want you to really do is think about driving that foot into the ground as hard as you can to get more force out of oh, this you're right. Yeah. right the more you drive into that foot the more you really push off with that foot the yeah. more you're gonna be able to pull with that arm totally. right so you're gonna use ground force to your advantage right mm -hmm. and that's super huge for all kinds of movements right yeah. okay go for it drive off that front foot Excellent, excellent, excellent. Great job, shift forward, good, good. Nice. It's a really dynamic movement every time you roll your shoulder over, and it's cool to be able to feel all the way along each different muscle set pulling from different angles in your shoulder. Yeah. As soon as you twist your hand a little bit, it's coming from a different angle, right. and you just, it's all about the squeeze at the back, which yeah. is what you're always looking for in the contraction anyway. Yeah, so you t touched on something really perceptive in that the other thing that's happening is that it's a higher load than you'd be able to lift in the gym. Mm -hmm. So what you're getting is this neurological stimulus to recruit even more muscle that goes beyond the limited area. Yeah. So what happens to most people often is they'll do a movement, 
they'll, they won't necessarily feel the target muscles. They'll feel the, the smaller target muscles, but then they'll walk away. And a couple minutes later, they'll be like, oh, goodness, I feel, I feel a lot more because they've engaged a lot more than they have realized. No, absolutely. Yeah. And it's the constant tension. So for you, is, it, is there a time under tension type? What's your programming for, in that regard? So as you might guess, there's about, just like any tool, there's so many different ways to incorporate this into your training. You can use it as a finisher. You can use it for activations or recoveries, just doing eccentrics for recoveries. But if you want to just use this for the workout, there's a very, very efficient 90 second protocol. You literally are 90 seconds under tension. You're doing about five or six reps at that slow pace that Gareth was showing. And basically what you're doing is you're burning through muscle fibers in a very systematic way. So you're, you basically have three major muscle fiber types. Your type one, which is your aerobic, your type two A, which is your aerobic and glycolytic. And then you've got your type two B, which is your fast twitch muscle fibers. Those are the ones that are the most bang for your buck, your cheetah muscles that make you go fast and sprint, your explosive muscles. Those are the most expensive muscles most of the time it's hard to get those because you either have to lift very heavy or you have to lift ballistically or do something plyometric to get those muscles to activate. Mm -hmm. This is basically when you go at all max effort, all three muscle fiber types are on at the same time. Mm -hmm. And after about 10 seconds, a little less than 10 seconds, your type 2B muscle fibers fall out. Then you're stuck with your type 2As. They fall out after another 30 or 40 seconds. And then finally, your type 1s fall out because they run out of energy to do that. So basically your fuel types run out for each of the different cell types. So it's a very thorough, extremely exhausting, but when done properly, you need four or five days of recovery to do that. So it's a super efficient way to strength train. So you can spend a little less time strength training and a little bit more time doing the other things that you want to excel at. Well, and particularly uh, plyometrics and uber heavy weights are like basically the number one ways to injure yourself. Right. So while getting the advantages of those exercises without the risk, that's, that's a huge win, I think. Yeah, people can get on this. There's no weights or bands involved. So like he can go from full exertion on this and he can literally drop it at any moment. So there's no weights to re-rack. There's no bands under tension. So it's super, super safe. And the beauty of this is as you watched him do some of those exercises, he's getting weaker and weaker by the second. So by the time he's finishing that exercise, basically he's cr creating less force. Now, that's great on the synapse, but if you have a weight in your hand, right, and you're creating less and less force, that's where injuries can occur because you can't handle the weights that you're holding anymore. So here, that removes that risk. So you can actually simulate much higher uh, levels of activation in your muscles with a lot less risk. All three muscle fiber 